Hey GP learners, in this episode I'm going to talk to you about how you can do ENT examinations through video consultation format. Let's tech enhance your primary care and learning. So I understand that many clinicians find examining patients through video consultations quite challenging. Well, the ENT system is one that you can do various parts of examination through a video consultation. I'm going to cover that right now for you. So one of the best things that you can do through video consultations is you can get the patient to identify where the actual problem is coming from. Why is this necessary? Well, how many times have you had a consultation note that suggests the patient says, I've got a lump in my neck? Where exactly is that? Different patients may think that's in different places. And being able to visually see where the patient is concerned about can be a really powerful tool. So for example, for some patients, a lump in their neck may be here, maybe here, and can sometimes even be here. And clearly each of those has a different possibility in terms of the clinical reason. Additionally, because you can see the patient, you can also get them to palpate the lump for you. So simply asking the patient to put two fingers either side of the lump so you can see in between, can give you a rough idea of the size. And if they can't do that, generally means it's quite small. Finger and thumb can be an alternate option. And also asking the patient to describe what they're feeling as they're showing you can often be a really good way of getting some descriptors from them. So is it smooth? Is it firm? Is it craggy? Or does it feel like it's a rubbery consistency? Does it hurt when you squeeze it? Simple questions like that, that you can see what the patient is doing at the time can be really useful in terms of your clinical reasoning. Clearly one of the more common lumps that we tend to see are cervical lymph nodes and the patient being able to identify this by showing you where they're concerned about is really useful. Additionally, you can ask the patient to lightly put their finger on top and ask if there's any pulsing kind of sensations that they can feel from it. Clearly if they're touching a lump that you can see and it's pulsing, that may not be a good thing common presentation that many patients may have with their throats is a sore throat or concerns that they may have tonsillitis. And this is potentially something that you can deal with through a video consultation. Asking the patient to open wide and turn their camera inwards may allow you to see the back of the throat clearly enough to understand what may be going on. However, if you're doing that, a couple of tips. Number one, always recommend that they get somebody else to hold the camera for them. Number two, that they put the flash on their camera light on or use an additional torch. And number three, always try and use the camera that's on the back of the phone rather than the selfie camera. The resolution tends to be a lot better. However, I must admit for this kind of assessment, I do tend to prefer to get the patients to take a photograph for me just because the quality of the image tends to be much better because you're not reliant on the data transfer through video consultations, which can sometimes make the images a bit harder to interpret. If you would like a resource that you can share with patients so they can take the best possible images for you, just have a look at this video right here. One quick pointer I would give, you may be concerned about a Quincy. Obviously this is a single lump on one particular side and the patient may have difficulty swallowing as a result of it. Clearly if that's the case, I would have a much lower tolerance for dealing with the patient in terms of either admission or treatment. Just because you can't do a complete assessment as well as you may be able to do face to face. However, if we are thinking about tonsillitis, don't forget to use the fever pain score. It's a really good tool that can help understand whether or not the patient needs active treatment, watch and wait, or face-to-face -face assessment slash admission. This has largely replaced the Centaur score and felt to be more specific and accurate. So the five criteria for this is a fever in the past 24 hours, purulent tonsils, if they've attended rapidly, so within the past three days of the symptoms starting, inflamed tonsils, and the absence of cough or cosira. So a score of 0 to 1 means antibiotics are not needed and it may be better to do watchful waiting or symptom management. A score of 2 to 3 may be appropriate for a delayed prescription of antibiotics or watchful waiting. And a score of 4 to 5 would mean considering antibiotics as a treatment option. Clearly symptom management should also be included in there. So we dealt with the throat. What about the nose? Again, you can ask the patient to identify where the particular area of the nose is causing concern. Additionally, you may be able to see particular secretions. Well, you may not want to, but you could do. Clearly, it's quite hard to take any images internally of the nose because of it being a small orifice. And the logistics of particularly a patient taking an image themselves can be quite tricky. Might be possible if they've got somebody to help them, but generally you have a limited view. However, watching the patient do various maneuvers may help. So for example, if they're complaining of a blocked nose, 
You can ask them to occlude one side and breathe in and out through their nose to see or listen to if there is any difference. This may help you better understand the level of occlusion you might be dealing with. Additionally, you can clearly see any surface area issues through either video consultation or again, asking the patient to take a photo. When it comes to the ears, examination is quite easy through a video consultation, through inspection, and this is really useful for identifying the area of concern for the patient because the ear, again, tends to be quite blurry in terms of what they think. Inspection of the ear is really easy through a video consultation and identifying the particular location of where the patient's concerned about is really good through this method. Also, you can often see quite well. So if the patient is complaining of ear pain, you can ask them to identify exactly which part of the ear is causing the pain. You can ask them to palpate around the ear to see if there's any specific tenderness, particularly mastoid tenderness. And it's really good for asking the patient to fold their ear over if you're looking for things like eczema, that kind of stuff at the back of the ear that may need treatment. Often again, it's useful if they've got somebody else to hold the camera for them. Clearly, it can be challenging to look at the internal part of the ear because of the small orifice that is there. However, you may be able to see discharge coming through and clearly see what type. And if you're really lucky, the patient may actually have an endoscope that allows you to look internally. No, I'm not joking, this has happened to me. So using something like this, digital endoscope can often provide valuable information in terms of the images that you may be able to see. A particular use of this that I would suggest you consider is having one of these for your care home residents and training members of the staff to be able to use them so that you can get really good quality images, which may prevent you having to do a visit for simple otitis externa versus otitis media because of this. An additional test you may want to consider for patients with ear problems is something called the hum test. And it's kind of what it sounds like. Effectively, you get the patient to hum. And by doing so, the side that is affected, depending on what they hear, may give you an indication to the problem. What do you get them to hum? Well, can be anything. I tend to recommend they hum their favorite tune. So this is gonna be mine. Let's see if you can guess what it is. If you think you know, comment down below. However, by doing the humming, what you're trying to figure out is what the patient can hear in the affected ear. So if the hum is louder in the affected ear, it's likely that there is a conductive disorder or possibly wax. If the hum is quieter in the affected ear, it's more likely to be a sensorineural deficit or neurological problem. And this can help with your clinical reasoning to figure out what needs to happen next with the patient. However, important to check whether or not the patient does have hearing aids. And particularly, do they have them in when you're assessing them? So we've covered ears, nose, and throat. What the area is worth considering? Sinuses. So with some around the corner and hay fever season kicking off, often sinus issues can be quite common. And actually it's really easy to get the patients to examine the sinuses for you. Simply ask them to tap across their forehead, tap top of the nose and tap on their cheeks in a couple of places. And clearly if they find a particular discomfort in one of those areas, that is likely to suggest sinus discomfort. What I do tend to do to help patients with this is I show them how firmly I'd like them to tap. So I show them to put two fingers together and stiff tap on the back of my hand so they can see what level of force I would typically use. And the benefit, because they're doing it themselves, less likely to poke themselves in the eye. You would hope. So EGP learners, that is how you do ENT examinations via a video consultation. You may want to check out some of our other videos that show you how to do different types of examinations through a video consultation method. If you want to do so, check out the video coming up right here. In addition, YouTube's probably going to be recommending some other videos for you, which are coming up right here. Don't forget to subscribe. Love if you get all of our contents first and foremost. And as always, EGP Learning is here to help save you and your patients time by tech enhancing your primary care and learning. Catch you next episode.